Welcome to part two of my West Coast van life adventure. I wanted to talk about fear this week as I've been pondering this for a bit. Fear of letting go, the fear of being different, unique, the fear of traveling alone, the fear of the sea, the ocean, sea creatures, the fear of injury, the fear of being different in your sexuality or relationships. More importantly, I wanted to focus on the relationship between fear, trust, joy, and risk taking. Hi everybody! So glad that you're here. If you haven't already worked it out, I am in Euclid, which is northern British Columbia, Vancouver Island on the west coast. Now the west coast is known for its big swell wave and people who absolutely adore surfing. I have not been back into the ocean in my own wetsuit. I have borrowed wetsuits a couple of times, ones that zip up the front and you put on like a jacket. My wetsuit is all, my wetsuit top piece is all one piece, the hood, and so you kind of have to put it on with your arms over your head. And my shoulder injury is slowly recovering. I'm excited to take you with you, w take you with me, and show you some of the beautiful marine creatures that we have in our oceans. Hopefully, we get to see a lot. Hopefully the swell isn't too crazy and I can dive a little bit. Fingers crossed I'm going to be going very gently, not pushing myself so that I take care of my body. Yeah, it feels the right moment to get back into the ocean and get back into my own wetsuit. Let's do this. <sighs> yeah. And my wetsuit on, half on, the rest is in my bag, I've packed up had some water and hydrated and I'm ready to go! I'm actually a little nervous because it's the first time I'm doing a proper free dive since my shoulder injury so I'll be very careful but wish me luck! I love free diving so much! I made it and it looks beautiful It was a really long walk. Okay. Time to put the rest of this on. <sighs> right. I'm in. Do you think society or those in power want us to be fearful because that affords them control? It was so interesting going for a dive in Euclid in this bay that I had never been to before and by myself. There was quite a swell, and I did not venture out of the protection of the cove. Halfway out, I thought I saw a sea lion, and my heart started racing. As much as I love diving, when I can't see the bottom and I don't know if there are creatures bigger than me around, my heart is a little scared. I 
have a little fear. I think a healthy fear of the unknown, the wild creatures, the power and destructiveness of the ocean and the sea for those unprepared. small bit of a hurry because the tide has come in a lot and I might have to get wet feet and I don't want to because it's a bit slippery and slidey so ah, I gotta get back before it's too high this is what I was worried about I gotta get past there. And I don't really want to get these shoes because they're leather wet, so I think I'm gonna have to go in bare feet. Oh, and it's gonna be muddy and sludgy. <sighs> okay. I cannot cut my fat feet on any shell. I knew I'd have to do some sort of wading. <sighs> I've been toughening my feet up all summer for this. It was so freaking worth it.
the hot springs, I met a lovely group of folks. All five of us traveling alone. All five of us reveling in the fact that we had been told so many times. What? You're drawing it by yourself? Hi. How's it going? And they look amazing from underneath. Yeah, do you know a cold place to do some snorkeling? As if this was a massive undertaking, one that very few others would do. Why would one not travel alone to see these magical things when waiting for somebody to come with us would hold us back? Eight thousand years of First Nations history in that area, and we went past a little tiny village as we left. If you know, we couldn't see it. Yeah. I promise you, it's there. Um, All of this stuff out here is sort of guarded by First Nations. The other thing about a sea otter, and this is part of a much larger story, but sea otters, in their lifetime. A very large percentage, probably almost about 90%, will never touch land. So this is a little bit confusing for people because they have legs, they have claws, they have pads. And a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I totally have a sea otter that climbs up on my deck in Vancouver. It's a river yeah. otter. River otters, they're very land-based. So sea otters have one thing that's radically different than all other marine mammals, and that's their fur. So fur for a sea otter is its insulation. They're so well insulated that they don't have to go on land for thermal reasons. They can also give birth in the water, they can breed in the water. The other thing that they do is sleep in the water. So often when we approach a sea otter, it'll be fast asleep. So they just bob there. So they do things like wrap themselves up in kelp, and that's a way to anchor themselves into a position and not drift away in the current. All of our sea otters are a replacement. So we had sea otters, they were completely wiped out by humans, and then they were replaced. So in 1979, 20 otters were brought from Alaska. There was 40 captured, 20 died, 20 survived. And they were released on the west coast of Vancouver Island in a place called Cayuga, which is further up the coast. So since 79, they've been repopulating. In the 80s, when I was a kid, we didn't see very many sea otters. But now they're very prolific in some areas. And this is one of those areas. For uh, caves, Tofino has got a, a bunch of great ones. So if you go to South Chessman's on a very low tide, there's a place called Rosa Bay. There's some caves you can go right through to get to other beaches. Um, so it's a very common thing. Further up the coast from here are some really, really prolific ones. But there's a nice little cave right here, which we should check out. So caves are interesting around here. Um, caves were used for burials, not exclusively. Um, and the other thing people don't realize is that as the land around here has shifted, there's a lot of caves in the hills. So a lot of those were the areas that a lot of the burials were done. Um, also burial boxes being buried with your um, canoes or all sorts of things that regularly happen down here. But this is a very common thing for us to have caves like this. Um, and really an interesting part of the coast. Just around the corner is an area that I used to spend a lot of time for flying. There's beautiful sea caves there, and there's round rocks all inside the cave. As you break those rocks open, you can find fossilized eggs inside the, the cave. That gives us so an extra 10 minutes or so that we can go down the outside and possibly find some whales, possibly. I will, and then I'll run to catch up. The singing lighthouse is beautiful. Walking through the forest, I'm older now. My body is not as agile and supple as it used to be. Cool. <laughs> I now am a little more afraid of injury. My bones get achy after a two kilometer hike, even on this beautiful boardwalk. Wow, what a beautiful boardwalk. The sound of the lighthouse. 
I have a responsibility as a filmmaker, and you have a responsibility as a visitor to know the history of the places you visit and to respect the feelings, cultural protocols, and protection of long-time local guardians and places. There's a spring right there. Oh, and you can start to smell the sulfur. Look at this, the water is just bubbling, bubbling right up here. Oh wow, and it's already steaming. It is our shared responsibility to care for sacred places by showing respect. Respect and appreciation as we work together to protect and restore these culturally and ecologically important places for future generations. Hot Springs Cove is no different. Hot water. Cool. It was an honor to visit the Cot Springs Cove, to experience it, to speak with the indigenous folk, to learn more about it from our tour guide. Yeah, it does. Wow. 
These trees and forests are ama amazing, magical, sacred. Grass also, but yeah, maybe they use sweet grass and they don't use uh, the effects of colonialism on this area make me sad and angry and I also at the same time hold grief and gratitude and appreciation that these places still exist and that I have the ability to go and experience and visit and honor them myself. When we came up to Hot Springs we were on the back of the zone. What I'm looking at is all the sea lion heads round about where that surf line is. There's a bunch of lions that are all checking us out. Woo, so yeah. these guys are being hanging out here a little bit, sort of sporadically, but there's a lot. There's probably yeah. 30 or more lions. Yeah. So yes, the view will be better from the outside just because of the nature of glass. Yeah. But um, they're all trying to figure out what the heck we are right now. So sea lions in these areas don't have a lot of experience with boats because they just don't get it. These are also a different type of lion than what most people are used to seeing. So south of us, we have a lot of what we call California sea lions. And that's the one that most people identify with. They're dark brown, they bark, um, and they're relatively large sea lion. These guys are not that variety. So these are a northern sea lion. They're called Stellars. They are also similar to California, but they're gold kind of colored. They're significantly bigger and they don't hang out where anyone sort of tends to be. You can hear so, them. Yeah, these guys only growl, so no barking. And those, if you're ever looking at sea lions, that's one of the things to watch out for. So biggest bears in North America are around about a thousand pounds. Sea lions that we get here are up to about 2,000 pounds. Leftover from bears. They even have something called delayed embryolization, which is a thing that bears do because of hibernation, which is an ability to impregnate yourself after breeding, but females can control when they get pregnant. That is a very specific bear thing. These guys can also do that. Myself, I've always been weird, slightly different, a little bit queer, and that has meant I have been told that I shouldn't be, and I don't want that. That doesn't feel good to me. Risk-taking, trust, and serendipity are all key ingredients of joy. Without risk, nothing ever happens. Without trust, fear creeps in. And without serendipity, there are no surprises. Isn't this beautiful? I just had to stop. Sometimes driving a really big vehicle on a road that's very twisty and turny with lots of other cars that are just right behind you feels super intimidating and overwhelming. So stopping felt like the right thing to do to just reground, recenter, slow down, not feel like I'm rushing. Take in this beautiful water here and just pause. The whole reason I'm traveling is to slow down and not to go at speed and the last couple of days have been so beautiful with sunshine and fog and boats and sea lions and forest. Oh, time to breathe. Time to breathe all of this beauty in and see how freaking blessed but I don't know if any of you drive big vehicles and sometimes the feeling of pressure of driving these in heavy traffic just 
is a lot, especially when you don't want to push your vehicle and you don't want to go fast. And then you just feel like everybody's on your ass. So it felt like the right thing to just pause here for a second, let everybody go by, chill, recenter, keep going. So oh, one of these, this is just the shed, bit my little baby toes twice. Oh. Joy and trust and experiencing something new are the feelings that truly make me feel alive. Too often, fear is the inner critic dialogue that prevents us from fully embracing joy and gratitude. Anything that you might label as too good to be true might be related to fear or scarcity or vulnerability. We've been taught to be afraid of vulnerability, that it is a weakness, and I believe it is not. I believe this is an incredible strength. I trust because I am willing to accept the risk, not because it is necessarily safe or certain. Because in this world, what now actually is safe or certain? If you ask me, very little, except change. October. How is it October? Time isn't real. Time isn't real. Climate change is. <laughs> She looks like really long right now. I'm so pretty in the sunshine. Thanks for bringing me to the lake, Miss. Oh, I nearly called her mystery. This is Siren. You can close <laughs> Look at these cute glasses. Anyway, that was a nice little detour to the beach. 
And now I have a long way to go, so I better get back on the road. <sighs> Let's go. We're doing it. This trip has been amazing. It's been exactly what my nervous system needed to calm down from some of the work stress that I've had going on. <sighs> it has sort of been a shakedown because it's one of the longest trips that I've done recently and two things have just happened. My 12 volt system is somehow disconnected and I don't know why. And my sliding door, my entranceway, I think something's like a stone or a screw has gotten into the sliding uh, sliding groove and now the door won't open. <laughs> so to go out and film there I had to climb out the back of the van. <sighs> out of all of the things that could have gone wrong, please be assured I am not complaining. I'm tired. Yeah. Like working two jobs, three jobs. It's a lot of effort. But it's been really super nice to see some friends, to reconnect with the forest. I think everybody should take time to just recenter and connect with the forest. And it's really also awesome to be able to have learned a little about a little bit about the old growth forest that exists around here, how little of it really is left, some of the uh, indigenous nations around here, their territories, to better go diving. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. To learn about the sea lions and the furry little murderers, the sea otters. Freaking awesome. I hope you have all enjoyed this episode. Hopefully I'll better get these two little issues figured out. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, it really makes a difference and supports this channel. If you want to come and join us over on Patreon, you get real time and behind the scenes updates of things I'm doing and places I am. And access to connect with me and uh, connect with me more easily, which is really special. I'm really appreciative of those that of you who are watching this channel that I've been able to connect with. It's been amazing. So thank you all so much for your support, and I hope you've enjoyed these adventures and coming along. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.